I have a confession for you guys. I'm growing quite tired and impatient with this specific investment fund. This investment fund is actually something that we've covered quite a bit on this channel. But after two years of holding on to this fund, I'm sorry to let you know that this investment fund is still in the negative. It's still in the red. What I'm talking about is the BPI ALFM Global Multi-Asset Income Fund. While the rest of the stock market and the S&P 500 are now experiencing all-time highs, this fund is still in the negative and performing subpar. Should we continue to invest in this fund? This is what we'll look to cover in this video. So enough of this intro and let's go. But before anything, if you are new to this channel, Hi, I'm Mark. It's nice to meet you. In this channel, I cover quite a bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. And specific to today's video, again, we are talking about the BPI ALFM Global Multi-Asset Income Fund. Now, just as a refresher, this is a balanced fund. More than 50% of the portfolio is allocated for fixed income securities, while the rest, over 40% of the portfolio is allocated to equities. So it's a fund that's slightly aggressive, but also slightly conservative. And its key selling point is its monthly dividends. It gives us about 4-5% based on an annualized yield. For the purpose of this channel, I've actually invested in this fund through two different channels. The first would be through Gcash G-Invest. But before this fund even launched with G-Invest, I actually invested in this fund via the BPI mobile app. So let's look at my position in this fund via Gcash G-Invest. As of the time of the shooting, it's currently April 11th, 2024. My investment of 4,000 pesos is currently at 3,990 pesos. So this means that my funds are down about 0.25%. Not all that bad. I mean, it's almost breaking even. But since it's nearly been two years already, I think I want to demand more from this fund. So I'm not quite happy with that small almost break even number so let's park that let's go on to my position via bpi mobile or bpi online so i invested a lot more via bpi online i was targeting to do about 500 pesos in monthly dividends and this is what i've shared in a previous video for my investment via bpi online i've invested 105,600 pesos Currently, this investment value is at 104,712, which means that I'm currently at a loss of 887 pesos and 93 centavos. Percentage-wise, this is a negative of 0.84%. So again, after doing a lot of update videos on this fund, I think I started at 2 months, 3 months, 6 months, a year, and a year and a half most recently. I'm quite disappointed that the fund is still underperforming and it's still in the red. Given the context of the S&P 500 at its all-time highs right now, and even though I understand that this is a balanced fund, it's still quite disappointing to me that it's not going up as fast as my other investments. So if we compare this to the S&P 500, the BPI US Equity Feeder Fund, two years ago, in April 2022, the net asset value was at 234. This fund is presently at 278. This is about a 14% increase versus investing in the BPI ALFM Global Multi-Asset Income Fund which is not even breaking even yet. So you would see that this fund is quite underperforming. But as mentioned earlier, the appeal of this fund is really about its monthly dividends. And how has the fund performed in terms of these monthly dividends? Well, I can only backtrack through the BPI online app up to 3 months only because that's as far back as I can go. For the month of March, the dividends that were declared for this fund is at 499 pesos and 78 centavos. So I'm really getting my goal of 500 pesos in terms of monthly dividends. For February, the dividends were at 492 pesos and 26 centavos. And for January, it's at 489 pesos and 25 centavos. Again, I don't have the full two-year data on this because it's just not available via BPI online. So if I were to project about 490 to 495 pesos based on two years of dividends, the monthly dividends totaled over a course of two years would be nearly 12,000 pesos. Plugging in the loss of the performance as it is right now, we're looking at about 11,000 pesos in terms of returns when you factor in both the NAVPU and the monthly dividends. So based on this, with returns of 11,000 pesos, from my initial investment, this is about 10.42% in terms of returns. 
So this would slightly be more comparable to the return of the BPI US Equity Feeder Fund. Again, it's a little over 14%. So comparing this, the BPI ALFM Global Multi-Asset Income Fund is performing about a third slower than the BPI US Equity Feeder Fund and the S&P 500 as a whole. So I guess the question now is, should we continue to invest in this fund? Based on my previous updates, I was giving this fund a lot of time since the stock markets weren't performing in the last two years. What we're getting from the fund in terms of the monthly dividends is actually making up for its losses. So while that's well and good, I think I honestly would not be too keen, too aggressive with this fund. Its value is really more on the long term. Again, now it's easy to say that it's underperforming because it's really going head to head with the S&P 500, which with this one at an all time high is of course going to be blowing the competition away since this fund invests over 50% of its portfolio in more conservative fixed income securities. It's just not as stellar and as loud as an equity fund. Is it a bad fund altogether? I don't think so. And as we've seen, when the markets were down, it was still able to declare monthly dividends. And I think that's what you are going to be weighing here. Would you like to be invested in an equity fund wherein there are no dividends and they are just reinvesting everything and they would perform much faster, higher risks, possibly higher losses? So I think as with most investments, it's always about priority. I mean, if you do want to get a little bit of something from your investments monthly, so it's the BPI, ALFM Global Multi-Asset Income Fund. But if you are looking for a stellar, better performer, I think you should be looking at equity feeder funds, tracking the S&P 500. I've actually shared with you and recommended better alternatives to BPI since BPI has raised their trust fees in the past months for the BPI US Equity Feeder Fund. It used to be 0.75%. Now they doubled this to 1.5%. If you missed that video of mine, you can check that out. I compared the competing S&P 500 offers from the other banks such as BDO, Metro Bank, RCBC, and East West Bank. And yes, these funds that I compared, both from BPI right now, have their performance based on their original trust fees. So now that they've doubled this, this is something that you would have to factor in in terms of their future performance. So what do you think? Is the BPI ALFM Global Multi-Asset Income Fund still what we made it out to be? Is it still as attractive to you guys? Let me know in the comment section. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing. As a whole. So um, banks such as PDO, RCBC, Metro Bank, East West Bank,